This is the non-technology section. We will look at a couple examples that do not require technology, nor are you permitted to use technology. So you have the function as shown here. In part A, it says find the x values where this function has relative extremes, and then justify your answer using the first derivative test. So what we want to do is we essentially want to find uh, where we have horizontal tangents. So I'll take the derivative, negative 7 minus 8x. To find where I have a horizontal tangent, I set the derivative equal to 0, and then solve for x. So that's going to give me x equals negative 7 eighths. That's where I'll have a horizontal tangent. But I want to use the first derivative test to determine if there'll be a local max or a local min at that x value. So I'm going to construct something that I have coined the no point number line. It's a little device that helps you to determine the behavior of the derivative, but you will not receive any credit on the AP examination for doing this. So you will do it for yourself, but not as a part of justification. So anyway, I drew a number line and I drew the zero of the derivative and I want to know the behavior of the derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a value to the left of negative 7 eighths and a value to the right of negative 7 eighths to, de to determine the sign of the derivative. If I put in a negative number, let's say negative 10, into the derivative here, negative 7, the negative 10 would turn this into a plus and we would have a positive value. So the derivative, derivative's sign is positive. To the right of that, let's say I plug in positive 2, uh, you'll see that I'll get a negative derivative. So this no point number line will help me answer really parts A and B. So I want to say for part A that F has a relative max at x equals negative 7 eighths because, now the reason we're going to use the first derivative test, because f prime of x goes from positive to negative at x equals negative 7 eighths. Okay? So the statement that I made here, together with showing that the derivative equals 0, is the first derivative test. And now part B says on what interval is it is the function f decreasing? And I see here where the derivative is negative. So I will say f is decreasing on, I'm going to use my bracket for negative 7 eighths, it's an 8 all the way up through infinity. I can't put a bracket around infinity because it's not a real number. It's not in the domain. So f is decreasing on the interval, negative 7 eighths to infinity, because f prime of x is less than 0 on the open interval, negative 7 eighths to infinity. Like that. Again, this no point number line helps us to answer both of those parts, a and b but I will not receive credit. This does not count for justification. Your words count as justification. This statement here counts as justification. This statement here counts as justification. Example 2, f of x is shown here. 10x cubed times the quantity x minus 1 squared. And part a says find where it has relative extremas and justify with the first derivative test. So we're going to find the derivative. Now you can find this derivative using the product rule, first term times the derivative of the second, etc. What I'm going to do is do that for you and then write the answer in a simplified then factored form. So it's going to be 10x squared minus quantity x minus 1 times quantity 5x minus 3. Again, we want to find horizontal tangents. And so we set it equal to 0, which is giving us three critical x values, 0, 1, and, uh, pardon me, 3 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to construct my no point number line. No points because it gives me no 
points for justification. We have uh, zero first, then I have three fifths, then I have one. This is the x-axis, but I want to know the sign of the derivative. So I plug in a negative, let's say a negative 10. Let's come up here to, to look at this. So if I plug in a negative 10, this is always this is positive and it will always be positive. If I plug in a negative 10, this will be a negative quantity. And finally, the last quantity would be negative. But the product of all those would be positive. Okay, so the derivative is positive. Now I pick a number between 0 and 3 fifths. So between 0 fifths and 3 fifths, let's say 2 fifths. First term is positive. The second would be at 2 fifths. That would still be a negative number. And 2 fifths here would uh, also still be a negative number. So this is still negative and this is still negative, making my product positive. Okay, so between 3 fifths and 1, so between 3 fifths and 5 fifths, let's say 4 fifths, this will be positive. This will still be negative, but then this quantity becomes positive, and then the entire product is negative. Plug in bigger than 1, and they're all positive, making the product positive. There's our no point number line. That'll be real helpful when we answer our questions. Okay, so now in part a, uh, let's change the color on this, and part A, relative extremes. So let's see, F has a local max at x equals, now I want to determine where the derivative went from positive to negative, so at x equals 3 fifths, and that's because F prime of x goes from positive to negative at x equals 3 fifths. I would like to reiterate that you need this statement, but really together with setting the derivative equal to 0 makes the answer valid. Um, we're going to continue though here. We also want to say f has a local minimum at x equals, I want to see where it goes from negative to positive, that's going to occur at x equals 1, and that's because f prime of x goes from negative to positive at x equals 1. I'm ready to take a look at part b. And part B wants to know where the function is, uh, let's see what's it, what it's asking, where the function is increasing. All right, there's a couple ways we can do this here. We can say that F is increasing on, now I'm going to break this into mini brackets, negative infinity to zero bracket in union with bracket, 0 to 3 fifths bracket in union with 1 to infinity and the reason is because f prime of x is greater than 0 on parenthesis 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 using all parentheses now I would like to say we have an option here since we're saying include 0 and include 0 we could collapse that portion and say from negative infinity to 3 fifths bracket union 1 to infinity so you have an option here you can do it the first way or you can do it this second way. Now this is kind of interesting, what is actually happening at 0 so we're saying the function increases and then at x equals 0, it temporarily has a horizontal tangent, but then starts to increase again until it gets to a point where x equals 3 fifths, then it starts to decrease, and then it increases again. So if I were to draw that uh, function increasing, and then a plateau, then increases again, then it decreases, and then increases. So the function would be, let's 
something of that nature. Example three is going to illustrate the concept of a closed interval test. We sort of glanced over that on the opening page of the notes and now I'm going to be specific. So you got some function and the closed interval test is finding absolute extreme. So what is the biggest value of the function on the interval? What is the smallest value of the function on the interval? So what we need to do is find all critical x values. We start by finding where the function will have horizontal tangents. So I say f prime of x equals 1 half minus the cosine of x. I'll find the horizontal tangents by setting the derivative equal to 0. And so that's when the cosine of x is going to equal 1 half. And that, of course, is going to occur when x equals pi over 3 and then again at 5 pi over 3. So this tells me I will have horizontal tangents at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. If I have horizontal tangents, then they are definitely candidates for the location of the absolute max and location of absolute min. But we have other candidates. We need all critical x values. So critical x values will be our x equals pi over 3. 5 pi over 3, these are giving us good candidates, but we also have to consider the endpoints of the function because as we said earlier, endpoints automatically are local extremes and perhaps these endpoints will, will be the location of the absolute. So for instance, let's say my function looked like this. Which it doesn't, but suppose it did, well then my absolute minimum is is this value here my absolute maximum is this value here but in another case let's say it goes like this the endpoints are not the absolute so the absolute minimum is here and the absolute maximum is here so what we do is we find all the locations of the horizontal tangents we always consider the endpoints to figure out what is the biggest value of the function so what I need to do is take these critical x values and plug them back into the function to simply find where the function is big or what the biggest value of the function is and what's the smallest value of the function. So if I plug in f of 0, I would also plug in f of pi over 3. I would plug in f of pi over, sorry, 5 pi over 3. And finally, I would plug in f of 2 pi. f at 0, so I'm plugging 0 in, that's going to give me 0. If I plug in pi over 3, that's going to give me pi over 6 minus radical 3 over 2. If I plug in 5 pi over 3, that's going to give me 5 pi over 6 plus radical 3 over 2. And f of 2 pi is going to give me simply pi. Now, this is a non-calculator, and the numbers aren't pretty, but we're human, so we can figure this out. Uh, pi over 6, if you see pi is roughly 3, 3 over 6 is roughly a half. So we have 1 half minus, um, then this fraction is going to be a little bit bigger than a half. So we have 1 half minus a little bit bigger than a half. Then this number that I see here, this number is going to be a negative number. So it's certainly bigger than zero, but is it, I'm sorry, certainly smaller than zero and certainly smaller than pi, but let's look at the next one. So the next one is five pi over six. Now five pi over six is real close to one. I'm sorry, real close to, to uh, pi, like six pi over six. So it's real close to pi. Then we're adding a positive value. So that's certainly bigger than pi. So now we have our biggest value and our smallest value. So we're going to say the absolute max is that we wouldn't say 5 pi over 3. We'd say what the absolute max is, which is 5 pi over 6 plus radical 3 over 2. Now, I wish that number came out more pretty. Suppose that number came out to be 10. So we'd say the absolute maximum is 10. 
and then we want to say that the absolute minimum is pi over 6 minus rad 3 over 2. Again, I wish that was like a negative 5 so that we could say the absolute minimum is negative 5. But that's what the absolute, I'm sorry, the closed interval test does. It finds the absolute max and finds the absolute minimum value of the function on the closed interval.